Hey everyone, Michael Team Squeaky here with another battle vid from TCO. I've decided to try and do these once a week, so make sure to comment, tell me what you liked or disliked about it, as well as leaving any requests for decks that you want to see played. So here we have a game between myself playing a aggro version of Cobalt and Heroes Rise Again playing a Fire Nature Rush deck. Um, this game is going to be pretty fast just because we're both playing, you know, early to mid game centric decks, especially him being a rush deck, he has to kind of get me early. So we're going to see a lot of action and a lot of fast result, uh, solutioning occurring in this game. So he goes ahead and plays a Gear Flame into Mana Pool, bringing out a Blaze Vulture. I go ahead and throw a Keeper of Dawn's memory. My reasoning for this was, well, Keeper of Dawn's going to be a little slow for me for what I need. The other stuff can help me stay alive now. So, just trying to keep my early game options extremely open. Puts the Essence Elf into the battlefield, swinging with his Blades Belcher. Unfortunately for him, turns over a Terra Pit. And I'm going to use this to destroy the Essence Elf, since honestly the Essence Elf probably wouldn't attack otherwise. Whereas the Blades Belcher I can kill with the Aqua Seneschal I'm about to summon. I throw the Crystal Memory in for the exact same reason I threw the Keeper of Dawn in. I just don't think I'm going to need them in this game. I think I'm going to need the other early stuff. So I go ahead and summon an Aqua Seneschal. I'm really just going to use this to start picking away this army. Um, I know a lot of his army is going to be 1000 power. So this is going to give me you know, a lot of, a lot of freedom in that regard. As well as a lot of draw potential. And this Aqua Seneschal does end up becoming just like the most hero Aqua Seneschal ever. So he goes ahead and sends a Jet Darter, or Jet Thrust Darter, and swings at my shields, giving me a Skull Shatter as well as a Bone Blades that I then use to go ahead and kill the Jet Thrust Darter. I again throw go ahead and go with the early game centric uh, playstyle and throw the Skull Shatter into my hand. I end up tapping three and going for the logo scan. At this point, I'm just trying to get as many things to deal with his aggression as I possibly can, and I do end up getting a Chasm Entangler as well as a uh, Squeaky Scarred or Blood Gloom Hollow. So I put out the Chasm Entangler and then just uh, kill the Blaze Vulture with my Aqua Central drawing the Cobalt. So from this point on, I'm feeling pretty strong. Um, like I feel in a really good pit, like spot at this point. So he ends up going for three level one creatures, a Blaze Belcher and two Pricklebacks. And I really wasn't quite sure how I was gonna go with this, um, especially once I draw this Bone Blades, because I could kill one block one, kill the other one on the next turn. So I would, but that would require me kind of sacrificing the uh, Chasm Entangler. So instead I choose to go for the Squeaky and just kind of planning to, to be able to hold for a little while. He ends up drawing a Jet Thrust Darter though and really is going to be swinging for four, which means he'll have guaranteed be able to take two. I do block the first Prickleback with the Scarred or Blood Gloom Hollow. This prevents it from going back, which will, again, allow me to kill it. He swings with the Jet Thrust Starter and the Prickleback, breaking a Star Lantern and a Blinder Beetle. And then he swings with the Blaze Belcher, which is why I did not block with Chasm Entangler earlier, which allowed me to kill the Chasm Entangler. So I know I've now seen two Jet Thrust Starters, which is going to be a lot of his fast attack. Not all of it, he still has Gia Flames, I believe, but a decent chunk. So, But I do go ahead and decide to tap six, pulling out my uh, Cobalt, since I do have Squeaky as an attack, drawing the shield. 
killing the Jet Thrust Garter with the Aquasonus with drawing a card, and then killing the Prickleback with the Cobalt. Um, unfortunately, the way cards stack on TCO, sometimes they cause problems when I'm moving them around, especially with evolution creatures, so that was a small annoyance, but that's what that was. So I killed the, the Prickleback, and from this point on, I'm, I'm feeling pretty unbeatable, to be totally honest. Um, even though I am still in a, in a somewhat scary position, it's just one of those situations where you're like, okay, I've got every solution possible. I have a blind beetle to tap things if he summons. I can just there and kill for a while. So at this point I go ahead and throw the Bone Blitz in the man pool, and even though Bone Blitz would be a really good card to have, I feel like I have enough solutions with other cards that I really wasn't needing it. So I go ahead and tap the Blinder Beetle, or bring the Blinder Beetle out to tap the Prickleback, and then play the Crystal Memory to go ahead and search my deck. I kind of forgot that it doesn't actually draw in DCO, because as I've been playing on OCTGN for a little bit. Um, and so I moved it to the top card of my deck and then shuffled without actually getting the card. So I had to go back and get it and then reshuffle. And then again, I just killed the prickle back and go ahead and pass turn. gets a bronze arm and chooses to play it and just into his mana. I really don't think that was a good idea, but I guess considering I had already killed two Pricklebacks, he might not have any other thing else to really play with it. And was really just hoping that he'd get something else. So I get another blind beetle. Um, at this point, I go ahead and tap six to pull out the other Cobalt. And I go ahead and swing with the Aqua Sevenishal to just draw a card. You'll notice I'm not really breaking too many shields, especially with his deck being so early game centric. I really decide to play it pretty cautionary in terms of how I'm actually, when I'm going to go for the kill or whatnot. He summons another Jet Thrust Arter. He can't really swing at this point. Um, since I do have the squeaky on the field, I figured he had another fast attack um, in his hand, but didn't have the mana to play it. So he was just going to hold on until he had the mana for the next turn and then swing with two fast attack, um, since that was kind of what I was expecting. I do go ahead and just play another blinder beetle to kill it off, though. Um, I would say my plan this entire game from this point on was just don't let him have more than one creature on the field at any point. And again, Aqua Seneschal being a hero card lets me draw another card. At this point, I do go ahead and break two more shields, giving him some creatures, but I mean, at this point, he would have to get past Squeaky and two shields um, all this next turn, because otherwise I'm just going to have too much strength on my next turn. So he does end up getting a Prickleback as well as... Uh, the one drop that can only attack creatures from fire. So he ends up summoning a total of three creatures. Um, unfortunately for him, I did have two storm spark blasts that I had been holding on to in my hand, um, just in case, just for when I was breaking shields and when he started summoning stuff. So I do go ahead and tap six and play the storm spark blast, getting ready to kill off everything that he has in his hand. And I go ahead and trade the Aqua Center at this point. He's already drawn me so many cards um, that he's just been well worth it. So I was like, okay, Aqua Center thanks for your help. You've done amazing. Now it's time to take a rest. And uh, he does actually draw me a Terror Pit. I mean, I don't know what more you can ask for from an Aqua Center Shul. I make a small misplay this turn. Um, 
what I ended up doing was you can see me looking through my deck to see or my graveyard to see if Dark Return is going to be useful right now. Uh, I played the Resolka first and then a Fumes. Knowing that he was holding onto a card, I really should have played Fumes first and then the Resolka, especially since I know that creature wasn't a fast attack. So while it was a small misplay, um, ultimately it didn't really have any bearing on the actual game, as I do end up finishing it this turn with the Cobalt swinging for the two shields. And since Squeaky didn't get to do anything other than that one block, I decided to go ahead and swing for victory with it. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.